Hey, this is Todd, and today is Saturday, July 28th, 2018. Today we're going to review some methodologies of how to raise monarch caterpillars. Um, and basically they can be raised on potted plants, as you see here, this is potted showy milkweed, Discolapia speciosa. And then when I um, use the potted plant method, I generally put them in a pop-up cage. And if you don't have potted showy milkweed, here's another alternative. That is a bouquet of showy milkweed as cuttings placed in a bottle with a narrow neck. And there's actually a, a floral pick lid on top of that, which is a lot better than a floral pick itself because the reservoir there holds 16 ounces of water. And showy milkweed, like cuttings of other host plants, will um, take up a lot of water. And so it's always a good idea to place it in a water bottle that uh, uh, will provide enough water uh, for the plant. I generally change out the cuttings of showy milkweed every three or four days. Um, when caterpillars are young, you can use a squat tub. I found a couple of monarch eggs on leaves. I removed the leaves, kept the plant there, and they'll hatch here and feed for a couple of days. And then I'll either switch them to what I call the open terrarium technique, and with that technique, I've got butterfly net material that I will, once I place the plant inside the bucket, I'll place the butterfly net material over the hole of the lid. And then once that's all in place, I will place the holdout lid on top. But sometimes, um, if you happen to raise a monarch in a closed container, it's a little more labor intensive because you want to remove frost daily and a fourth or fifth inch star monarch will start to go through a lot of leaves, so you have to replace the leaves that lately. So the question is, sometimes we get the chrysalis of a monarch to pupate in inopportune areas. Um, if you raise it using the open terrarium technique, oftentimes monarchs will, the fifth inch star larvae will form a pre-pupa and pupate right on the leaf. Or in the mini pop-up, you can get the monarch pupae to pupate there. You can emerge from there or you can emerge them in a smaller mini pop-up cage. So today's video, we're going to be talking about how do we move monarch pupae to emerge them in more opportune areas. Um, maybe we don't want it to emerge in a larger pop-up. Maybe we don't want it to emerge on a potted plant or on cuttings. Okay, I don't know if you can see that a little bit better, but what I did is I took the pin and placed it uh, underneath the silk and started to remove it. Um, and I haven't done it all the way, but I just did it in a step. And you can see, if you look closely, the region of silk that is attached to that monarch pupa. So you don't have to um, try to remove the chrysalis without the silk. It all comes together. Same thing with swallowtails. Swallowtails have an added dimension in their pupae. They not only have the uh, cremister, uh, or the button that you see here, but they also have a girdle. And the same principle applies with a swallowtail pupa. If you want to remove it, uh, identify the silk with a pin and slowly unpeel the silk and the cremister and girdle and the pupa, everything will come with it. And then you can reattach the silk to paper towel to emerge the butterfly. Okay, I've taken that same pin and removed more of that silk. I haven't removed all of it. And as you can see, the pupa is no longer really attached to the lid of the container, it's attached to the silk, and the silk is becoming dislodged from the container. So I will continue with this without harming the pupa and connect it to the uh, mini pop-up. Okay, so there's the pupa hanging, and there's a lot of silk. So as you can see, I've taken uh, that same pin and I've attached it to the top of this mini pop-up. Let's see if I can... And as you can see, the chrysalis is safely attached. 